Hello, brethren, believers, and non-believers alike. This is Emmanuel Fernandez. This is my third video. I'm not going to be numbering all the videos because I might do 35. I might do 3,000. It's up to the Lord. I want to pour everything I know onto this YouTube video. Everything. And my knowledge really, there's no limit because God is limitless. So, I'm pretty soon going to probably make YouTube videos until I die. I'm not going to stop. This video is my... Uh, statement of faith uh, I believe now I'm not gonna tell people how to do the ministry but you can ask me for advice but if you do a YouTube ministry I strongly recommend you do a statement of faith video what is a statement of faith what you believe in and what you know about God so there's no uh, confusion because the devil's off the confusion God is not there's no twist in my words, which you guys are going to do anyways, because the devil is the manipulator word. If you watch my video, Semantics, I proved scientifically. Scientifically is knowing that the devil will, can, does, is doing, will manipulate the English language, manipulate how we speak, change the meaning of words. That's irrefutable, non-debatable. It's done on purpose. Okay? Statement of faith is basically what drives you. What you believe and what you know. We'll be talking about that. Try this. This is this is very important. I'm gonna try not to stray off topic. This is gonna be statement of faith. This is what I stand for. Eric Phelps, Eric John Phelps, which was you know one of the people I admire. Don't worship. I don't worship nobody but God. I admire. What's the difference? Well, I got the very fact I gotta tell you what admiration means is because since since you're the way you interpret words is probably all screwed up. I need to tell you what admiration and worship is because people think they're the same. They're not the same. Okay, I'm gonna be talk. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. It's messed up, but I have to talk to you like a little kid. It's messed up. Have the way how you talk to a little kid. You talk to a little kid by explaining everything, every word, over and over again. Not say you're stupid. Say that you've been programmed. Okay, I've been programmed to talk. Yo, what up? I, you know what I mean? That's how I've been taught. Was I stupid? No, I've been programmed. You must unlearn what you learned for all you Star Wars fanatics out there. I mean, I also be talking about movies. I don't want to stray about movies, but should Christian watch movies? Absolutely. Anyone that's saying you shouldn't watch movies, I mean, I don't want to stray off topic, but I'll make them. I'll make perfect sense why a Christian should watch movies in another video. I want to stay on point, on topic, statement of faith. Let's talk. Let's talk about God. Again, the very word God, so diluted, watered down. What do you mean by that? God means a lot of things to a lot of people. People that think materialism is the way to go. Well, first of all, let me tell you something. You're religious. Materialism is a religion. Religion is a set of beliefs that has nothing to do with God. If I believe uh, I am what I am, but the things I own, well, you're materialistic. Your your God is the materialism. Let's, let's talk about definite. I'm going to def this video, Stephen I'm going to define every word. I'm going to talk to you. I'm sorry, that, that, but like you're, you was born yesterday. When people say, I wasn't born yesterday, I'm going to have to talk to you like you were born yesterday. I do this because I love you. Okay? This is out of love. God is love. To believers and unbelievers. My definition of God. Now, is there leeway? This is all the definition? Yeah, but what God is to me is. My master. Let's make it as simple as a thing. Seeking God in a general term. Is your master. I do what he says. Period. End of story. Now, will I justify it? Will I disobey him? Absolutely. I'm in the devil's word. I have evil flesh. I have flesh. I'm saved, but believers need to know you have evil, sinful nature. It does not. People think it just goes away when you're saved. No, it doesn't. I... I state, I state, I state the fact it gets stronger when you're saved. Your sinful flesh, your body, your sinful nature, your pride hates God. If you can't admit that, you're not saved. Pain and simple. Okay? Do you say hate? Yeah, I use an inflammatory word. Yeah, I said hate. Okay? My sinful flesh. I'm not talking about my spirit, my soul. You're your soul. You're not your spirit. Every good quality that you have, that's what you are. Every good thing that people say as you are. Everything negative thing people talk about you, your negative qualities, that's your flesh. You talk about negative quality of mind, not pride. That's the flesh. The way that I sometimes I, I 
stutter, I don't talk correctly, blah, 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 blah. That's my flesh. I gossip. Every believer does that. Flesh. Hypocrite. Say one thing in my video, and I go and do it. Flesh. Uh, so, let's stay on point here. God. God's my master. Period. Period. I do what he says. Undisputed master. His word is law. His word is sovereign. It rules over me. Now, describe God. Okay, describe God in detail. That's what I'm going to do. God is one being and three things, three separate beings at the same time. Okay? Well, that sounds like it's impossible. If you can decide, find God in one word, He is impossible. God's impossible. That's how you define Him. He's the impossible. What do you mean by that? Well, Jesus Christ is 100% man and 100% God. Not 50% man and 50% God. Because like I said, I was a Catholic. That's a, that's all I thought he was. Oh, this guy's a... Okay, Jesus Christ is God, but he's 50%. He's 50-50. You know, he's 100% man. He hungered like I hungered. He yearned to sleep. Tempted like I was tempted. But yet he was God. If a bird doesn't want to fly, he walks around. Is he a bird? No, he's, of course he's not a bird. Because the bird is defined by him flying. No, a bird's on the ground, he's walking around, he's eating, he's still a bird. God came on the earth as a man. Okay, that means he's just a man. No, he's still God. Okay? Jesus Christ, uh, the miracles he did, he did not only through himself, but trusting on the Father. Okay? Okay? The, Jesus Christ came as a servant to how we should serve the Father. Okay? But let's not diverse our curse. A diverse here. Stay on point. Uh, God's one being to me. He's the creator of the universe, creator of everything. Period. Uh, that's that's the God the Father. Let me describe God in three parts. He is. He's three parts, and he's one part. He's both. I'm not talking about he's a many many gods because. You're in your hermeneutics right now. You're going to twist it up. Oh, he believes in many gods. No, they're all the same God. God the Father is the, is the Supreme Lord and Master. Jesus Christ does the will of the Father, not the other way around. That's why when you pray, you pray in God's name, not in Jesus' name. I mean, you pray in Jesus' name, but to God. You don't pray to Jesus. Uh, Joel Osteen, like I told you, I was naming names. Joel Osteen, don't tell me he didn't because I watch... To, to, to break apart these false preachers, you got to watch them. And I watch them. Watch all of them. Watch all the videos. He showed me a ministry where he said, let's go ahead and pray to Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Pray God, Father, Father. This, this, this in Jesus' name. That's how you pray. Most people don't even know how to pray. If you're a believer, you better know how to pray or you're not saved. So I believe in... Uh, no, I don't believe. I believe... I know God exists. This is not the video where I prove scientifically exists, but let's just say that first of all. I know he exists. No belief. I know he exists. I know. And if you know God exists, by default, you know all the other parts of him exist. So I, since I know God exists, I know for a fact Jesus exists. I know for the fact Holy Ghost exists. So let's go and describe God in parts. God the Father. He's the what you pray for. He's the creator of all things. He's omniscient. Means he knows everything. Knows your thoughts. He knows everything. Knows the thoughts of you, his angels, and the devils. So I'm going to try to cram everything because I'm trying to cram two hours and 30 minutes. So if I'm rambling, I apologize. But if it's two hours, I feel you're not, not going to have things to do because, like I said, there was a God of preoccupation. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's here in this very room. And he's in Guatemala. He's in space. He's on Pluto. He's in the universe. He's able. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. All powerful. There's no limit to his power. He can do anything. He wants. He can make my heart stop right now and make me drop dead. Make a plane uh, engine drop right on top of me right now. Because whether you like it or not, the devil. I'll make a video about this. The devil wants to make you think physically you're immortal. You cannot die. Tell me if I'm lying about that. That's a fact. Subconsciously, maybe you're not aware of it consciously, but subconsciously, devil made us think we cannot die. 
Who cares if there's a hell? I can't die. I'm physically immortal. I'm going to talk about that, of course. So, yeah, I just talk, talked about the three attributes of God. Next is Jesus Christ, the Son. I believe Jesus Christ is God. He just says God is God the Father. It's God manifests in the flesh. When you die and you see him, he's as a man. He's not a spirit. He's a man. He's a man like I am a man. He's a Jew. He's a racial Jew. He's not white. Talk about this. Earlier. He's a racial Jew. He's the son of God. God manifested in the flesh. He's 100% man, not 90% man, 99.999% man. He's 100% man. He hungers. He gets offended. He gets angry. And he's God. Does everything God the Father. But yeah, he submits to his will. A lot of people talk about, yeah, Jesus is God, but they some some people leave that part out. He does what God the Father does. not what he does, what he does, what he wants to do. Proof, proof biblically, simple. Gethsemane. He didn't, his humanity spoke to God. I don't want to go to the cross because he knows the pain and suffering he's going to be, but he's going to encounter. But what did he say? Not my will, but your will be done, Father. So next, next so, so we talk about God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son. I'll talk about what he did. I'm just talking about what is he. I'll talk about what he did later and what it means to me. Next, the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost to me is the one that uh, unbelievers and some believers don't talk about. They don't talk about the Holy Ghost. And that's one of the unforgivable son, sins. Jehovah Witnesses, which I'll be talking about, and at Seventh day Adventist, say Holy Ghost is a force. No, he's not God, he's a force. Holy Ghost is just as God as God the Father and Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost is a spirit that moves in, that he does the, uh, he works the miracle, just like this is. What I'm doing to you, evangelizing to you, is this me? Am I laboring? Am I using it yeah, as me? But this is primarily the Holy Ghost. Okay? Something came over me, not possession, not channeling. God influence. He talks to you in your own thoughts. People say how God talks. He doesn't talk to you audibly. If he talks to you audibly, you're demonly possessed. When I say audibly, like I'm talking to you audibly. He talks to you in your own thoughts. Every time you ever, th you ever get a thought, this happens even on unbelievers. You ever get a thought? Where did that thought come from? That thought's pure and righteous. Where did that come from? That's God. Are you sure it's God? Well, let me put it through the fire. What's the fire? The fire is the book. God is a consuming fire. What do I mean by put it through the fire? Simple. Does it agree? Does the Bible agree with that thought or disagree? This is one or the other. There's no contradiction, no error, no ambiguity, no confusion, because God's not the author of confusion. Say this. And if he agrees, then that's, that's uh, pure. I had a thought to make this ministry. Couldn't sleep yesterday. Couldn't sleep because I was thinking about what to say. Would I be tormented by demons? Absolutely not. I know when I'm tormented by demons. Trust me. Say a person can't get demon possessed, but you can get demon oppressed. I'll tell you the differences. But let's not stay on point here. Holy Ghost is just as much God as God the Father and Jesus Christ. But it's subordinate. What I mean by subordinate? It does what uh, God the Father and Jesus Christ says it to do. They're all equal, but they're separate. Think about chain of command. Because remember, if you're a Christian, you're a soldier. You need to think about this in military. How, do, how good an army would be if the, uh, the, the private tells a general to do? Private tells us what the lieutenant to do. The lieutenant tells us what the general to do. The, it's no chain of command. You have a, a war in disarray, army in disarray. They'll get killed in five seconds. Chain of command, chain of command. Of course, the devil knows this way. That's why he disrupts the chain of command in the family. Kids are telling the parents what to do. Wife telling what the man to do. The man telling not list, people not listening to the man, the head of the family. And you have disarray. Done by design. I'll talk. Don't worry about it. I'll get all about this in the ministry. In the ministry. But this video right here. It's about my statement of faith, where I uh, abide by, what I, where I know, what drives me. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not a force. It's just as God, as Christ, and God the Father. The distinction is, it's the third part of the Godhead. I'm not going to say Trinity, because that's Romanism. I say, triune God. The Godhead. That's what the Bible does say. Trinity, that's, that's more politically correctness. That's more Romanism. Trinity is not even in the Bible. Not in the King James, anyway. So, Holy Ghost is uh, just as God. It's God the Father. It is, to me, this is belief, it's not really known. But when he said he breathed life to man, 
I think that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That's what he, because he created everything by his word. Universe means spoken sentence. Let there be light. Light. God the Father created you, created everything just by speaking. That's his power. Just his power. Universe means spoken sentence. Look it up. Spoken sentence. Verse. Like rappers say, you almost spill this, spit out its ill verse. Uni means one. One verse. Unicycle. One wheel. Universe. I'm a very big student of etymology. I believe any Christian believes he's saved. Anybody who wants to know true period, period should get into etymology. What is etymology? The study of words. Kids, I have five kids. You know what you're talking about when you say I have five kids? A kid is a baby goat. Look it up. I got a brother named Joey. You know what Joey means? Baby kangaroo. We're animals, said the devil. We're animals. Oh, I'm a male. Really? You're, you're an animal? You're masculine. You're not a male. I got a cat here. Female. It's not feminine. The cat's not feminine. It's female. Male and female are for animals, but let me stay on point. So, Holy Ghost. So, there's a three parts of the Godhead. God the Father tells the other two parts what to do. Christ tells the Holy Ghost what to do because the Bible says, I'll send the Comforter, capital C. The Comforter is the Holy Ghost because Christ is not here on earth. Okay, Physically, I mean, he's not here on earth. He's here in spirit because I got the Holy Ghost in me. That means I got, if you have one person in, you got all of them. So I got the Holy Ghost in me. I got the God, the Father, and Jesus Christ because they're all equal. Just have a different rank. Think of the Godhead as a military order. Military. Because it says you're supposed to be a good soldier in dual heartness for Jesus Christ. You're a soldier. You're a warrior for Jesus Christ. You're a soldier. Make no bones about it. I'm a private right now. I believe the more you, you grow in your Christian walk, you go. I know some guy, Eric Phelps. I think he's a general. He's biblically sound in doctrine. He has his own ministry. He evangelizes around the world. Some people are generals. Some... But they don't get puffed up. Oh, I'm a general. Because in the army, general can kill, get killed like this. And it's the next person up. You ever heard of that? People that love sports, basketball. Oh, he's the next man up. Oh, uh, Tom Brady, he's hurt. Well, next man up. If you think about it, sports is really like military. You got your order. You got your coach. Everything is chain of command. The devil breaks that chain. Anybody that knows sports knows chain of command is important. Oh, he's right. I know football. I mean, I know the, the quarterback can't tell the coach what to do. If the coach tells what the uh, the quarterback tells what the coach to do, you have disarray. You have confusion. Now you might give advice, but the coach's word is final. And above the coach is the general manager. Above the general manager is the owner. The devil is just a general manager of the world. He's not the owner. Big difference. He's a god of this world system. World is another hermeneutic. You have to understand. The Bible is written in Greek and Hebrew. Then translate it. You get some words that gets lost translation that needs clarification. When they say God is this world, he's not talking about earth. Because why don't you say the God is this earth? No, God is this world. That means world system. He owns it. It's his. He's a general manager. He's running the team now. But the God is the owner. He restrains, he permits what's happening. His his I believe in God, the doctrine of God's providence. Which means nothing. You know, God knows your hair, the numbers on your head. Looks as by your hairs are numbered. You know that? He knows the numbers on your head. He knows how your body's working. My stomach's growing on that. He knows that before it even happened. That's just my flesh saying, you got to go eat. I'm not going to go eat. Any Christian that does not know how to command his body, control his body, is not saved because self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. It's a supernatural gift. Someone says that self-control is not saved. I don't believe you. Because if you're swearing, you don't have self-control. I'm My stomach's growling. I want to go eat. I'm not going to go eat. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this done, then I'm going to eat. So, yeah, i just tell you the three parts of the Godhead. It's a chain of command. God of Father is number one over everything. He created his son. His son is just as he... Am I, just, I'm, I have a father. I'm supposed to honor him. Well, is he a God in, in terms of me? Is he above to me as, as far as physically? No, he's just as human being as me. But in terms of rank... Is he above me? You better believe it is. I do what my father said. Honor your father and your mother. I'm living in my parents' house. I treat this this house like it's a hotel. I don't do what I want. I'm a little invite friends. Yeah. But 
Chain of Command, uh, I think that's what I'll talk about next. Chain of Command is very important. I think that's going to be my next video. Chain of Command. I'm talking about Chain of Command in general. Biblically, you know, Chain of Command is very important. So, I talked about who Jesus Christ was. Now I'm talking about what he did. What he did, very simple. Remember, God is not the author of confusion. He wants me to tell the simple as possible to you. He died to break the curse of sin. The reason why there's night time is because there's sin. The reason why you have acne, sin. The reason why you age, sin. The reason why there's time, sin. There's none of that in the New Jerusalem, which is heaven. Look up in the Bible for all you believe. Look up Revelation. Heaven has no night. It's not under a curse. There's no time. It's eternal. Time is a result of sin. Time is really illusion scientifically. I prove that when I prove scientifically you're in a fake reality. You're literally in the matrix. Don't worry about it. How scientifically, what I'm talking about, no Bible, no God, no Christ, that you're in an illusionary, uh, customized simulation. Chuck Missler, he's a Bible believer too, so if one says I'm a heretic, well, look up Chuck Missler's work. Any true Bible believer knows he's a Bible believer, man of God. He talks about, hey, do you guys know we're in a computer simulation, really? Do you know that? Do you know that I'm not really here? When I say I'm not really here, I'm talking about... Uh, through, through physically. There's no such thing as physically. There's no such thing as mentally. It's all spiritually. I know quantum physicists that say that. Who? Don't worry. I'll name names. Don't worry about it. I'll, not, I'll talk about quantum physics. People that don't really believe in God, that they don't believe in God, but there's something's going on here. I mean, the way, you, do you know you're 99% free space? Do you know even though this is hard, the solidity feels like I'm hard here. It feels like it, some things are mushy. My bed is mushy, but they're all made of the same stuff. They're 99 free, free, free space. 99%. 99.999 free space. That's what atoms are made of. Everything's made out of atom. That's what it is atom. Proton, neutron, electron. I told you I'll be talking about science. Proton, neutron, electron. And it's, it's going at the speed of light where the force seems like it's solid, but it's not really. Don't worry, I'll talk about that. But like I said, I'm digressing here. Let's stay on point. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. His death, his sacrifice, because he's a pure blood, because there's no sin in him, he's God, was sufficient enough. So that have, I have not to go to heaven. Jesus Christ didn't die so I can go to heaven. He Jesus Christ died so I have the opportunity to go to heaven. Opportunity. People think, oh, he died, I'm going to heaven. No. No. He gave me the opportunity. His, his, now, I know you guys are going to go comment on that. Go ahead. But. He died to have the opportunity. He died, first off, for the elect's sake. We suffer for elect's sake. Jesus Christ died for the elect's sake. Yes, I believe in limited atonement. Don't worry, I'll talk about Calvinism. I have a, don't worry, I'll pour it all out. He died for the elect's sake first, but he died also for the sins of the world, for everybody. God, believe it or not, this hard, this hard for even me to believe. This, this is a verse in Peter. God said he wants all to come to repentance. What does that mean? God wants everyone to go to heaven, but he knows everyone won't. He wants everybody to go there. Jesus Christ's death, his death, death, I believe in, he died. That's first of all, I believe the gospel. That's, that's very important. He's the son of God. He died. He was dead. Stuck the spear in him. He was dead. He was buried. He rose again on the third day. It's an empty stone in Jerusalem. You know, people, this is actually a stone in Jerusalem. Go to Jerusalem. One of these days, I'm going to make a... I'm going to go in Jerusalem and see this empty tomb. There's a big boulder there, not there no more. I don't know if the boulder's still there, but there's a, there's a movie coming out with Jesus Christ called Risen, how they say, yeah, they stole his body. Go, there's a movie about it right there. That Movies, movies they're of the devil, of course not, but if you don't think God speaks over the devil's movies, you don't know about God. God's providential. He speaks over the... Matrix is a demonic movie. Rest bones about it. It's satanic. Not going to debate. But it's my favorite movie, right? Why? I, I see God speaking through me in that movie. Oh, you see the devil. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Just bear me out when I talk about how everything is simulation. We'll see. If you think God doesn't speak over the devil, that's the way he dies. God, God speaks over everybody. God uses everybody. Saved and not saved. God's providential. Providence means you, no matter who you listen to, who you watch, yeah, you may hear the devil, but if you're saved, you hear God speak it over the devil. If you're the devil, his voice might be stronger than you. Like, don't listen to this guy. But you might be in 
conflict. Remember, if you're saved, you have a battle. Sinful flesh and your soul fighting each other. Soul lusts against the flesh. The flesh lusts against the soul. So I'm running around the time here. I gotta go ahead and hurry up. I believe in the gospel. And I believe it's only in one place. There's some people believe the gospel in Romans. No, it's in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. Anyone says the gospel is anywhere else, it's a heretic. Period. Get away from it. Gospel, yeah, the Bible talks about the gospel everywhere, but the gospel literally, I'm talking about literally, remember hermeneutics. Literally, what the gospel is word for word is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. Believe on these things on which you don't believe unless it is vain. That Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. He was dead, buried according to scriptures, and he rose again on the third day so that our sins can be forgiven. That is the gospel. Any other gospel is a false gospel. If you put a word in front of any other gospel, it's a false gospel. Prosperity gospel, that's a false gospel. The enlightenment gospel, that's a false gospel. It's the gospel. There's nothing, there's no adjective. The only adjective is the. I don't know if it does adjective or not. I don't know. But the only word before gospel is the. Any thing before, get away from it. So, I know, I believe in the gospel. I believe what Jesus Christ did for me. And when, what, what, what does it mean when you're saved? When you're saved, you're a disciple of Christ. When you're saved, you're three things. You're a priest. What you, what you speak is in authority. Does it sound like I'm shaking? Does it sound like I'm unsure of myself? I don't know, I don't know if people are going to pay attention to me. This is embarrassing. You're a priest. You speak of your authority. You say what you mean, you mean you say. You're a king. The meek shall inherit the earth. There is going to be a literal, I'm not a millennial, I believe in a literal, a thousand year reign, millennial kingdom. Literally, thousand year reign. This earth is going to be reconstructed, regenerated. Jesus Christ is going to rule from Jerusalem with a rod of iron for a thousand. Is that a figuratively, allegorically, a thousand years? No, a real, literally a thousand years. And if you're saved in Christ, you're going to rule with him. Partakers in Christ. You're going to reign with Christ. All in the Bible. So you're a priest. You're a king. Uh, you're a prophet. You're going to speak things before they happen. I already said in my intro, the Bible's a prophetic book. Okay? It talks about the end days, earthquakes, which is all happening. Famine, which is happening. Oh, that happens all the time, but it's happening more degree. This is all verifiable scientific. We had more earthquakes on this earth than ever before. Look it up. Fact. More hurricanes than ever before. Fact. Weird things are happening with animals dying everywhere. This is all fact. Look it all up. Remember, I told you, do not believe me. Look it up. 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 I can't do it. I'm too busy. Well, like I said, devil's a god of preoccupation. That's why God uh, caused the devil to make it hard for me to find a job and maybe have no desire to watch football because football's on right now on Sunday, so I can do this. Holy Ghost suppressed all my fleshly desires to do this. God makes time because he's out, He's beyond it. People think God's in the realm of time. Like I said, you think you're immortal. You can, you can live to be 150 years old. God's beyond time. God can wait. <laughs> in the sense of God, there is no wait with God. Wait to God is a foreign word to him. He's beyond time. He's viewing... The universe, past, present, and future. You can't comprehend that. Ken Hoven, brother Ken Hoven, said that to me. Like I said, I'm not going to say things and say it's mine. I'm going to name names in good and bad. Ken Hoven said that. I said, absolutely. That's how God is. He named, he views past, present, and future at the same time. So he can, you know, he already knows I'm saved. He's looking at me. Yeah, he's saved. He knows the tribulation. Yeah. He, he views everything like a movie. Like you watch a DVR. That's how God is. Like you watch DVR, you can watch what program you want, you record, you can pause, rewind. That's what God does. He's beyond time. So that's my statement of faith. I'm wrapping up on 30 minutes. Like I said, I want everything 30 minutes. That's my statement of faith. Of course, I'm going to expound on it, make it uh, more uh, in detail. But that's my statement of faith. I believe in the Godhead. And I believe what Jesus Christ is and what he did for me and what we're supposed to do. We're disciples of Christ. You're a prophet, a king. Prophet, king, priest, period. Now, you can call them by other names. You can even add other things. But if you're not those three things, you don't see those three things. I'm not saying that you're not saved. You're deluded by the devil. So, Lord bless. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I come in peace. But when I speak, they're meant for war. Now, let me tell you what that means. I come in peace. Okay? It looks like Jesus Christ was battling people. What? But 
if your truth and his words are lies, of course they're meant for war. But I come in peace. Does that mean I want to fight with you? No. Does that mean I want... You're not a believer, I want God to kill you? No. But what, it, what does it mean meant for war? Meant for war is I'm not chosen of the day. That means I know and only abide all truth. But this world is created by lies. Money doesn't make the world go around. Lies make the world go around. Your money is a lie. Do you know what you have is not really money? Again, this should be this is common to me. This you can find all videos, you know, money's not real. It's a lie. Lies make the world go around. It's like uh for you movie goers. I'm gonna talk about movies all the time because I mean, uh, I'm not saying against, but I don't believe that uh, movies are not good. They can be edifying if you know how to use it. Remember, everything can be used good for bad. You're made out of water. Water is good. But I can drown you in it. Defibrillator. Clear, you know. Gives life, but do you know I can kill you with it too? Someone puts a defibrillator in my mind, you know that can kill me? Water gives life, but you know someone can drown me? The, the devil, when Eve bit on that apple... It made evil and good, her thought, his perception from evil good from being absolute to relative. Here's another thing I call the devil. I, you know, I can call the devil a lot of things. Yes, like Al Pacino said in The Devil's Advocate. I have so many names. You better believe he has so many. He's the god of relativity. Relativism. What does relativism mean? It means all well, good and all evil. When the Bible teaches total depravity, you're evil. You're born evil. I'm still evil. But you say, no, I'm still evil. That's why I need to yield to the Holy Ghost. Well, the Bible says you need to die to yourself every day if you if you if you if you're really good. No, I've been imparted righteousness, but I'm purely evil. I have satanic flesh. Relativity means well, everything's relative. There's no relativity is opposite of bigotry. And uh, yeah, that's very important. Let me let me get some people angry here. And if I don't get angry, I apologize. If you're you're, uh, I'm going to use incendiary words. Like I said, I'm not going to use euphemism. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If you're saved, I know you are these three things. If you're truly saved, you are a bigot if you're saved. What is a bigot? I'll tell you what the world means is a bigot. A bigot means his way or the highway. Oh, bigot is not someone you can work with. That's what the world means. What a, literally what a bigot means is there's only one way. There's only one way to heaven. That's Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. That's his real name. Now you can call him Jesus Christ. That's the that's the English name. But you have to remember, he's not an American. He's not a Roman. He's a Jew. He's a Nazarene. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach. Actually, you can ask a Jew that's not saved. Yeah, that's correct. He's Yeshua HaMashiach. You can call him any, you can call him Jesus Christ if you want, but that's his name. But anyways, you're a bigot. If you're saved. You're a bigot. Because you believe Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. No one comes to the Father but by me. You're it. You're his way. Okay, most Christians I mean with that. His way. I'm gonna start to lose you. You're a racist. <laughs> Glad I said that word because that's an incendiary, you know, inflammable word right there. You probably gonna turn me off right now. Let me tell you, there's two meanings for that word. Oh, there's no two meanings. Yes, there is two meanings. There's the devil's world system, the devil's matrix, and there's God's matrix. What God intended racist me. Racist means from the world. If I'm worldly, I prefer for my for I prefer my race. I hate every other race. That's not the races I'm talking about. I'm talking about the biblical races. I prefer my race over to everything. I'm Cape Verdean. Okay. So that means I want to marry a Cape Verdean. Preferably, no, I want my Cape Verdean wife to be saved because I strongly believe. I used to believe. Just marry someone in your own race will be fine. No, no, I think she has to be a believer or at least on the way to being a believer. Are you going to have chaos, anarchy? The devil's going to go there and mess your marriage up. So I'm a racist. Okay. Uh, Eric Phelps, which is a guy I admire. Admire doesn't mean worship. Admire means, you know, agree or strongly believe a lot of things he says. He's a racist too. He, it's not my fault that I didn't chose to be a K Verdian. God chose. I didn't chose to be a okay, Verdi. Okay, God chose it. Okay, so it's not my choice. So I'm a Verdian. I prefer Verdian over everybody else. What does that mean? That means I have a affection, you know, affection for. I mean, my family's Verdi. You're gonna say, well, I'm saved. 
my brethren is above my family. But when I was unsaved, my family is above everybody else. But when you're saved, your brethren is above your family. Your brothers in Christ means more than you and your fleshy brother. But I'm a key very that means prefer my race, prefer. Not put them on top. I prefer. Okay? That's all that means. I prefer my race or everything. Here's the news for you. Uh, Jesus Christ is a bigot. Okay? If if it's if this word is offending you, good. That's what I want it to be. But brothers in Christ know what I'm talking about. He's a bigot. Well, how's he a bigot? He says the only way to the Father is by my me. Well, if you look up the literal meaning of bigotry, not not these uh, thesaurus and dictionaries that are the devil, but the biblical. I'm talking about when the Bible is in the public school, is one way. There's only one way to do this. No one comes to the Father by me. Well, Jesus Christ is a bigot. He's a, next thing, he's a racist. He was sent to save his people, his Israelite people. Of course, save everybody else, but primarily was his elect and his Jewish people. Okay, that's all throughout the Bible. Of course, he ministered to the Gentiles and he sent us out to minister to the Gentiles, but primarily to the Jews. The Bible, I don't know which book it is, but it's a book. I'm passing 30 minutes. But, oh, this is important. There's a book. I don't know if it's Corinthians, maybe it's Corinthians. Apostle Paul keeps saying, to the Jew first and the Gentile. To the Jew first and the Gentile. To the Jew first and the Gentile. To a Jew. Why is he saying that? Sounds like God's a racist to me. He's saying to the Jew first and the Gentile. What does he mean by that? To the Jew first. Simple. Primarily it's to the Jew first. Okay. Okay. Now that I'm saved, I'm not a racist, but I'm racist in terms of primarily this is for my brethren. Yeah, I want everybody to learn from this. Absolutely. But primarily this is for my brethren, my brothers in Christ. The bodies of Christ. Okay, I believe in the bodies of Christ. That's another thing. I believe the body of Christ is a spiritual organism. We're connected like, you know, the internet is computers connected to each other. Well, that's how we are. We're connected spiritually. It's a spiritual organism. You don't go to church. You go to chapel. People are saved. Then you go to church. There's no one saved in that chapel. You're not going to church. So you go to church all you want. There's the hermeneutics. There's the allegorization right there. Semantics. This is the devil right there. Watch my video about semantics. Church is the body of Christ. You go to chapel. I can have a chapel right here in my room. But it's not church unless everyone here is saved or at least one person is saved. I know I'm saved, so yeah, I'm going to church. So Jesus Christ is a bigot. He's a racist. If I haven't offended you, I will now, especially the women. He's a sexist. Why does he call God, God the Father? Why doesn't he just call him God? He calls him God the Father because the Father is masculine. Oh, he's a spirit. Oh, yes, he's a spirit. But why does the spirit need a throne? Jesus Christ right now is in heaven. He's physically in heaven. He's literally in heaven. He's sitting on the Father's throne waiting to make his enemies his footstool. Why does the spirit need a throne? That because if God can materialize, and he will materialize you if you're saved, you're going to see him. He has a face. It's masculine. He has hand. He can materialize. He materialized me from his words. So you say he can't materialize himself? Oh, yeah, he's a spirit. Originally, that's his original form. God's spirit, no doubt about it. But he's masking. If not, why didn't Jesus just call him God? Why did he say Father? Why does he say Father? Why didn't he say God? Oh my God. Let this cup pass me. God the Father. Father. Unless you, to semantics, you're going to redefine that word. No, Father doesn't mean masculine. Father means sometimes. Believe me, there's people that think Father is a different thing. But go ahead. To semantics, the devil twists your interpretation of words. So he's the corrupt of the word. So yeah, Jesus Christ is a, is a, is a sexist. Because God the Father is the one that gave him life. Not Mary. Mary's not a holy mother God to all you Catholics. Mary's a flesh and blood. She was a sinner. Okay? She was unsaved. That's why Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, says, Mary, my mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. What are you saying? He's saying, now, I'm not your son no more. I'm your savior. You need to get saved just like everybody else. Okay? I didn't come for you. I came from my father. I was begotten from him. My father's last time I checked, father means man. Unless someone wants to redefine the, the English language and mean father means woman or his general term or no father's a force. No, father means a male figure. I have a have a father, but the Bible says call no man father. Or you priest calling your father and you're no father. I have two fathers, my earthly father. 
that was born. My father, God the Father. He's a man. He has. He's, a, he's not a man. Jesus Christ is a man. But God the Father is a spirit with masculine features. Why, why don't you just create a female Savior? Why do you have to be a man? Anybody ask you that? Why does it have to be a male? Why didn't Jesus Christ make him? Why didn't you just make a let me since since I'm not masculine, let me send a female Savior. Me not send a male Savior. Let me send a female. It's masculine. Men rule the world. Not U.S. Women rule the world, but men's in front of them. That men's behind the women that rule the world. Women in America. What America's turned into a female-dominated world. Don't believe me. Don't worry. I'm gonna be gonna get you females mad at me through feminism through all these shows. Madam Secretary, all these female shows. There's female football. You know that lady football league. Don't worry. I'm gonna prove to you America's a female world. But it's ruled by men in the background. And like I said, I want to name names. I'm not going to say Satan this, Satan that. Satan uses flesh and blood people to do his bidding. God doesn't need that. God didn't need, oh, I need help sending this flood. I need help destroying something. He put on this guy's heart to destroy something. No, he destroyed it with fire and brimstone, which is scientific fact. There's a documentary saying, so I don't know which literal Sodom Gorilla is called today. There's Ammon and Rocks. Hey, it looks like sulfur. Brimstone looks like it's fire. It's burnt, of course. But of course, school doesn't teach you that. Of course, the news doesn't teach you that. They want to know, you know, LeBron James, Kim Kardashian, all that junk, all that trash they used to work with. So Jesus Christ is a whatever Jesus Christ is, you is whatever his beliefs is, your belief. So Jesus Christ is a bigot. Only one way. Well, what do you know? I'm a bigot too. There's only way to the to the Father, and that's to the Son. On the way to heaven, that's through Jesus Christ. He's a mediator through man. I'm only married, virgin married, not all, all, not anything else. It's Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is it. He's a sexist. Well, Jesus Christ is masculine, of course. Of course. He didn't. His twelve apostles was a female last time I checked. Oh, maybe you guys want to redefine that. No, no, there were some female apostles. Some female preachers. There's some female pastors. What well, they are. Well, they're in sin. Don't usurp authority out of anything. True, I honor my mother, but I'm not going to let her usurp my authority when it comes to biblical doctrine. No, I put her in a place there. I'm a man. I'm a grown man. And to that, I have authority over her. My father is the man of this house. What is, he says goes. It's law. That's why. Now, does he act like that? Of course not, because he doesn't know he has authority. He'll be a other carnal in the judgment seat of Christ. Every husband in the house. I'm going to talk about chain of command. Talk about chain of command. I want to drill that down. A husband is a general. A man's house is a castle. Who has a castle? A king. You saying a man's king of his house? A husband? You better believe he is, whether he knows it or not. His wife better do what he says. His kids better do what he says. What is he going to do? Is he going to hit me? No. God will punish you. It's in the Bible. So Jesus Christ is a, a bigot. He's a sexist. And he's a racist. If you're truly saved, you're those three things. Now, when you minister to people and evangelize, you say, before they want to beat you up, hold on. The devil, through semantics, has changed those meanings of the words. This is what I mean. I don't mean bigot is what you think I mean. I mean bigot is only one way. Jesus Christ. Sex is, and I'm saying what you mean. I mean, sex is, it's a man's world, like James Brown said. Oh, yeah, you need men to help you. I mean, women to help you, no problem. Yeah, you need wife to help you. The wife is supposed to help the man, but it's, it ends. Authority ends with the man. It starts and begins with the man. Period. Okay, that's what I mean by sex, and races. Okay, You're supposed to prefer your own race, but do I see that with these race mixing marriages? No. Whites marrying blacks. Blacks marrying Spanish. No. So. I'm going to be talking about chain and command next, so Lord bless.